Hello everyone, my name is Hector Vargas and I'm going to talk about uh, Maxine Green and uh, her chapter The Continuing Search for Curriculum from her book Releasing the Imagination. This is chapter 7. Uh, basically I, I decided to choose her because I knew a little bit uh, about her philosophy of education, not much, and uh, then I just continued uh, the research and said okay I'll go for it. And, uh, and, and I know she has the idea of relating the arts with education. And back at the university, I had some experience taking a course in, in philosophy. And uh, that's like her basic core idea of, of how uh, life works and uh, link it to curriculum and link it to philosophy. And uh, also I had some, I, was, I had some experience doing uh, workshop uh, it's uh, from Harvard University uh, it's called making think invisible which at some point uh, motivates uh, students to to think to imagine what is going in, in their lives uh, not from the point of view of a normal lesson but through objects through art so I said okay maybe that that, that will also help me and I also did for four years uh, uh, as a team manager of a, a program called Destination Imagination and back its uh, origin from the United States of America from a previous project called Odyssey of the Mind. It's basically the challenges for students to do whatever they, they, they think it could be possible. It can be a piece of uh, uh, a painting, a piece of uh, art. It can be a skate, it can be different things, challenges, and, and it's like opening their minds to, okay, what can we do with certain specific objects that we have around us? And, and it's a continuous uh, challenge, and, and, and nowadays it's a big thing around the world. So I said, I'll, I'll go for it. And when I started reading the chapter, uh, The Continuous Search for a Curriculum, uh, surprise, uh, I found myself in a lot of, uh, with a lot of philosophy, and uh, it wasn't easy to uh, try to understand uh, uh, Maxim's uh, background and how to want to explain education and, and through philosophy and link it to curriculum. Uh, so, but but I, I I did my my best in, in that sense. That's why uh, I'll be displaying some slides uh, talking about how I perceive that experience. So maybe I, I, I've been doing a little bit different from my, my peers, but uh, I, I try to do it in, in, a, in a fun way also. Um, it, to talk about Maxine Green, just a little bit of her life. Uh, she was born in 1917, 23rd of December, in Brooklyn, New York, United States of America. And, uh, and she was uh, raised uh, basically with, with in the same area when her parents uh, she had a, a siblings, a twin siblings, and uh, all all her her time, uh, she also was thinking in, in, in children and education, and uh, her studies basically centered in New York University and Barnard College from Columbia University between 1938 and and uh, throughout her life, she's been teaching in different universities, associations around the world, especially the USA. She has written several books, I think it's between six or seven books. Um, she also has been awarded uh, several uh, important awards regarding education. And herself, she, when in her different interviews, she considers herself a philosopher, which we, it's, 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 it's true. I mean, she, she sees many things through through the window of philosophy. She's a writer. Uh, at some point, with, without being totally active nowadays, but before she was like a social activist in the sense that she was always trying to help uh, people pursue their, their goals in, in, in a different way and trying to promote the, the, the beauty, the aesthetic of, of, of uh, education from, from the art point of view. Uh, she also mentions that, that the, she considers herself an existentialist, um, basically because because she, she tries to define he, what is the human being uh, uh, goal in life, 
having the opportunity to, to be able to be a, a educated. In other words, how can education influence your uh, path throughout life? And uh, and the beauty, the aesthetic of education, I mean, sometimes not only education, but also arts, you have to try to see from a different point of view and, and look for the beauty of, 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 the, of, the, uh, of the discipline. So all these different points of, of view about life and education linked to the curriculum and to children and to the schools was, was her big idea. And that's what he, she's trying to explain to us in her chapter that, I mean, curriculum is a, it's an ongoing process. It will never be like, this is it. I mean, this is, it's always changing, no matter where you go, no matter the country, no matter the school, private, public. So it's a continuum search to, to look for the, the best or the better for, for children in, in, in education. Uh, we can see, uh, as, as I mentioned before, uh, she had a lot of uh, emphasis in, in, in the school because basically it's it's one place where, where, where the kids, where the children develop their mind, yeah. Uh, one possibility that they can do homeschooling, but also if they if they decide to, to go to a public or a private university, the school that is the place where they're gonna learn. Uh, meet new friends, uh, have new ideas. So that's 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 basically like their second home. And uh, as we can see in the picture, I mean, it's a place where they have to have fun, be creative. And so this is de develop their, their mind. Uh, she mentions that sometimes uh, schools only think about marketing, evaluation, and, 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 and that's it. I mean, that the curriculum is only fixed idea of we have to do the curriculum, we have to promote it, we have to market the other ways to, to market it to, to be able to get kids into the school and we have to assess kids in order to evaluate and that's it. No, it's, it's more than that. And then that's why she, one of the things that she mentioned is that we have to uh, give the opportunity for kids to, to imagine, to imagine things because that's, that's from the existentialist point of view, it's what we need uh, for our lives and, and, and for our body and mind. Yeah, imagine things to make them to make them possible. It's it's it's, it's something that, that every human being has the, the right to do. And and if we don't open that possibility in the curriculum, we're gonna like like stop the the possibility of, of imagine and, and create things. Uh, also, in, in different uh, videos that I saw from her and, uh, and uh, readings, uh, these uh, different art, uh, authors say that the word that she most liked when she's talking or when she's in an interview or when she's writing is passion. And that's right. I mean, if you don't have passion, no matter what you do, uh, basically, then, then, then you're doing nothing. You have passion, and in this case, in the school. Both teachers and students have to have passion for what they're doing. The teacher transferring knowledge and their students receiving that knowledge. If you do it with passion, you receive it in a different way and, and, and with like with love. And and that's very important. And it and it's true for any type of activity, any type of profession, any any anything that, that you like to do, if you do it with passion. It's it's great. You 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 end up doing the the, the, the best uh, possible things, and uh, also uh, Maxine was mentioning that if uh, she would have been going into the, the education field and into the philosophy and, and all this uh, area, she would have been a player or an actress. And, uh, you know, in, in the arts, I mean, you can express uh, the, the different ways to see the life. And in, 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 in acting, that, that's one way. I mean, you, you represent, you act uh, one character or one uh, natural thing from life with the movement of your body, with uh, 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 the, the movement of your, of your mouth. I mean, 
basically acting is one way to express what you think about life and that's a different way uh, from other arts but that that's what she said uh, she, it, she loves that that part of, of, of acting and and uh, and, and playwright uh, following also uh, uh, her ideas uh, about uh, about uh, imagination one of her quotes says Imagination is the ability to reach beyond what is to what might be or should be to open the way to the possible. So it's like there's no limit to that, and and that's why I have a a, a, a slide with the, the the picture of the famous uh, character from Toy Story, Buzz Lightyear, who who basically uh, his his motto I remember he said to infinity and beyond. So it's like if we can imagine things in the infinity, and it's far, far, far away. I mean, you imagine all the galaxies and it's in infinity, infinity, and it's more than that. I mean, it's the power of the mind. It, it never ends, and and at some point we know that our mind is very powerful, just that we don't put it to work a certain percentage. So so it's 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 like. Children can, can can create whatever they, they would like to do because if they imagine things that are they can be possible when they if they imagine things that they can make it possible. It's, it's just a matter of of looking for that goal. And and I have a, 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 a personal uh, example um, when when I was uh, back in my home country in Colombia, I. Uh, for, for economic reasons, because I had no job at those days. Uh, I started to do some tutoring at home, and then I ended up uh, substituting uh, as a substitute teacher back in my school, English and literature and economics and history. And then I started ending, uh, uh, doing also math for middle school and social studies. And when I taught social studies, I taught the uh, history and geography and culture, and Africa, Europe, Australia, India, Asia, and reading about Africa from a textbook, I said, I mean, this is not the right way to teach students. I mean, from a textbook, I mean, about so many cultures uh, in, in Africa and so many cultural traits so different from the Western ones that we have. It would be incredible if I could go over there and, 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 and live and, and with, know about these people and then come back and teach the, the students, but from a different point of view, different perspective. And I had that in mind always. Imagine, imagine how to go to Africa, Africa. And one day when I was working at, at the school, uh, I registered uh, for a workshop in Denver, Colorado. And... Uh, I went to the workshop. Basically, specifically, regarding the curriculum, a new change that they were doing, and, and, and as, as a, a middle school representative for the, for the middle school uh, school, I, I, I went as, as, as a teacher. I mean, to represent the school. And during the seminar, the first thing you do the first day is uh, you you introduce yourself to the rest of your peers, and you talk where you come from, what you do, and uh, suddenly it's man stands up, oh, I come from uh, uh, Uganda, Africa, I'm the head of the school, I worked here, blah, 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 and I used to work in the Colombia for 10 years for, uh, as a high school principal, I said, wow, incredible. Then a colleague of mine from Colombia introduced him to me, so we ended up talking, and at the end of the seminar, of the workshop, he said, hey, Hector, if you need, a if you want, there's a possibility to, to work here in, in, back in Uganda uh, for a Spanish teacher. Give me a call. Here's my business card. And six months later, I sent him an email. I gave him a call. And six after the interview that I had with him, uh, six months later, on, I was working in the International School of Uganda in Kampala. So I was in Africa. I mean, things were, but I always had in my mind, Africa, 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 and there was a possibility. So if you if you imagine things that can be possible, I mean, they become a reality, and that's what we want for kids. I mean, not only stick to a specific curriculum, but 
open the possibilities to, to go, think outside the box, think, 